Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited one of the exchange panelists for our blockchain open forum. He is Mr. Bowen Wang, the co-founder of DDEX and Hydro Protocol. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. So could you give an introduction about yourself and about DDEX as well? Yeah, definitely. So I entered the uh, Ethereum space in 2016 when I first came into the DAO hack. <coughs> so I met one of the, the first, first Ethereum co co-researcher uh, Jane in China, that's how I learned about Ethereum as well contract. Mm -hmm. And back then I was working at a venture capital firm in China, it's called Gen Fund, so it's one of the leading venture capital firm uh, in China. So I was doing a lot of research and I, well, I, uh, and I graduated from NYU as well, mm -hmm. so I did a lot of investment in blockchain space, both in equity and ICOs. So I was in um, token, Lino, do my work, and also <laughs> tons of ICOs presently. Uh, on our channel, we actually had an interview with Mr. Igor Artomanov, the head uh, CTO of ETC Dev Team. So, do you happen to know him or? No, I don't really know anything <laughs> about ETC. Things we build on top of Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> so, about DDEX, could you explain a little bit about it? Yeah, so DDEX is basically a wallet to wallet non custodian trading platform which trades for ERC20 token, which is 95% of the ICO tokens. Mm -hmm. So we, we have an off chain matching and on chain settlement. So it's basically as quick as a centralized exchange matching model. So we first come, first serve. Mm -hmm. And also we settle it on, on Ethereum mainnet, so no, nobody can steal uh, the transaction. So, uh could you explain on how a decentralized exchange is different from contemporary centralized exchanges? What are the advantages? Yeah, so let's go back to the centralized exchange. So centralized exchange is basically like a swimming, swimming pool. Everyone put their own coins and own money into their, their accounts and into their wallet address. Mm -hmm. And But people trading uh, from a different database or the centralized database, people just um, plus, minus and plus their portfolio numbers. Mm -hmm. But the only thing they interact with blockchain is deposit and withdrawal. Mm -hmm. But when there's the swimming pool has a hole on it, otherwise money lose. That's what happened to Bison, that's what happened to uh, Quiet Real as well. Mm -hmm. But this is not exchange is more of wallet to wallet. So so you have a wallet, Bo has a wallet. So we have let's say we have a million users, we have a million users. So we don't put our our, our apps in one basket. Mm -hmm. So even even Bo lost his wallet, no everybody is are intact. So mm -hmm. no one can get get stolen or get hacked because they own their own private key, they own their own funds. So using your swimming pool example, so everybody has their own small pool? Yes, like a, <laughs> like a water cup. Water bottles in, in a sense. So also uh, in the cryptocurrency industry, there are rise in the number of decentralized exchanges. How is DDEX different from other de contemporary decentralized exchanges and what are the advantages that you have? Yeah. So we actually, so as I mentioned before, we have an off-chain matching model, which is as quick as a central exchange. Mm -hmm. So we are actually 50, 50 times faster than, than the previous generation of uh, decentralized exchange, which is Ether Delta. Mm -hmm. And also we base on a smart contract on Ethereum. So we support uh, every token, every ERC token on Ethereum. So we, we can support actually 80K mm -hmm. token pairs trading on DDEX, technically. So you guys don't deal with Bitcoin? Uh, we, are, we don't deal with Bitcoin. Really? Yes. <laughs> That's the difference, actually. <laughs> so we only tackle the, the Ethereum and the ERC20 token, which is the ICO token. I mean, it may be a little bit more niche market, but I'm pretty sure it's going to make the ecosystem of your exchange much cleaner because it doesn't really it, well, interact with other chains. Yes, it's a so, uh, so right now it's only interacting with Ethereum, but we work with uh, Ethereum virtual machines, basically can be easily migrated to EOS, Definity, Sender, or Quantum. So many of the, uh, the public chain come to us looking for technical help mm -hmm. to develop their own decentralized exchange on their, product, um, on their public chain. But uh, de it depends on the uh, development cycle. We, we will announce the <laughs> next chain we are developing on it. So, Recently, Korean exchange Bitthum hacking incident was a catastrophe here. So, would the concept of decentralized exchange could it, oh, could it have prevented issues like hacking issues that was happen you know to Bitthum? Exactly. That's that's the swimming pool uh, case again. So, uh, so we basically we don't hold anyone's assets. So even a hacker or like let's say thousands have come into our exchange, they can they they can. They can find nothing because we don't have, have any any money within our exchanges. But based on and Quarryo are different. Even though 
and they can they have an insider trading, they have an outside hacker, so you don't really know what happened with their, their swimming pool. Mm -hmm. So and also I heard about like be some increase for sale. So uh, <laughs> sometimes most of the, the historically speaking, most of the hack uh, within the central exchange are done by insiders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned about only well users only giving out uh, wallet addresses. They don't provide any specifics. However, KYC AML regulations are a big issue, and I'm pretty sure that is also the case in China. Uh, how will you counteract against these regulations? And is decentralized regula uh, decentralized exchange one of the uh, targets for government regulations? Yes, definitely. So we, we really uh, work with the government. Uh, we talk. We, we want to be the most polished team within the landscape. We want to talk. We want to sit on the same table with the government. Talk about how to set the regulation, how to set the policy. Mm -hmm. But right now, since we don't do fiat, mm -hmm. so the, the anti money laundry that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, occurs on our scenario, since we don't have any cash within mm -hmm. and the transaction limited, and also we, since we don't take custodianship, we are not uh, we are not a money transmitter uh, as 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 a definition within the money laundry mm -hmm. uh, regulation as well. So uh, we're preparing for, for any regulation request, but right now there's just uh, don't have a really certain policy out there. So where do you think the Chinese government is going to go when it comes to regulation? Hopefully uh, sooner than later, actually. <laughs> then we will set, set the rules to compliance with the government. <laughs> uh, you said about, you explained about you guys not possessing cus custody. Well, custodianship. Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> it's, it's false where it works. <laughs> <laughs> the anonymity can cause problems. For instance, one could buy off a huge chunk of coin and then you know trade it at the same time using multiple wallets, which can lead to price manipulations and volatility issues. And that can affect a uh, cause negative effect on the overall market as well. Do you have any countermeasures to prevent prevent issues related to price manu manipulation? Yes. Uh, even though we are a decentralized exchange, but our order book is centralized, so we have a database to actually moni uh, monitor all the all the all the um, uh, all the weird transaction volume happening. So there's a one time that one of the contract was minted and has a root function that can be can be minted as much as possible. So basically, <laughs> people create coin as much as they want. Uh, but our monitor system catches the error and we deal with it right away. So mm -hmm. we do have a backend monitor system. So I had trouble understanding, like you said, DDEX is a first come first serve system. I had trouble understanding how to prevent order collision where two addresses bid on the same order. So does this only get resolved as a first come first serve? Yeah, so we base, as I mentioned before, I have a centralized order book, which is, so if there's a one taker, take the order from the order book and the order is gone, so they cannot bet on the same order. So the order collision only happened for, uh, with the previous generation of the of the decentralized exchange, mm -hmm. uh, and if if the the one who didn't get the order, he would just place another order on top of it. So wait wait for the next one to fill it. So the evolution of exchange is well a discussion, a controversial topic. As a well, the founder of a decentralized exchange, how do you where do you see the future of exchanges going? Because there are a lot of talks of hybrid exchanges, more centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges. Where do you see the future going? Yeah, I see the future going where actually everyone is holding their own private key. Mm -hmm. So I see like the Ethereum blockchain as more like an internet. Mm -hmm. And also the Ethereum wallet is more like browser. We can't think about one day that we don't use browser to look at a website, look at a funny picture or a funny video on YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to believe that everyone is going to have their own wallet mm -hmm. by the end of the day. Um, and also everyone is going to have the knowledge to keep their own, their own crypto assets intact and safely. So by, th by that day, so everyone can trade on a decentralized exchange. So everyone has the ownership of their own digital asset and also the user experience is just as good as a centralized exchange. So then they will migrate to the, to the decentralized, decentralized la uh, exchange landscape more easily. Do you believe that businesses and enterprises will also get into the decentralized exchanges as well? Yes, decentralized exchange is just a, a is just a, a module, so they can actually work for for block trade, for dark pool trading, so which is most of the financial industry uh, firm has it in, in their own because their large trade will, as you said, manipulate the market or dump the price. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to do it publicly, but they can do it more privately or membership only way. So which is the normal case for for the large financial institution to come into the play. 
Are you guys planning on expanding that into that direction? Yes, we are working with the, one of the largest OTC traders in the world to build their own OTC, this decentralized exchange, mm -hmm. which is uh, they trade only like a large scale, let's say 5,000 Ether per order. So during the panelist session, I really enjoyed the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about the blockchain open form so far? Well, blockchain open form actually is quite amazing since they, they combine all, every party from Taiwan, Beijing, uh, Korea, and also Silicon Valley. So we actually is one of the, uh, one of the most intri interesting party for, for the other blockchain participants to be in Korea this month. And I think <laughs> the quality is really high about all the projects and also content material as well. Thank you so much for a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Bowen Wang, the co-founder of DDEX and Hydro Protocol. Thank you for watching.